Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Eternal Plains. My name is Blaze, and welcome back to Thongcraft Tutorials. So last time we went over wands and foci, and hopefully by now you have learned how to use your arcane work table, or workbench, or whatever you want to call it. It's an arcane work table. <coughs> but if you notice, there's a whole bunch of other crafting you need to do. Like, let's say you want to use thomium. Well, you need stuff to do that. In this case, we need, well, thamium ingots, or not thamium ingots, but iron, and we need the magic thing. But what's this? Well, that's a crucible, my friends. How do you make a crucible? Well, I have one right here, but I think it's best if I show you how to make one. Now, simple as can be, you need to make a cauldron. Pretty simple so far, right? And it doesn't matter which one we use, so I'll use my iron cat for this one. Put it down. Iron cap, or any other one for that matter, and right click. Boom. It is now a cauldron. Thankfully, I need a spare one of these, so works out fine for me. I'll go ahead and bust out my chest. So, what do you do once you have your cauldron? Well, you're going to need a heat source. If you notice here, I've got a... <laughs> I'm trying to remember what they're called right off the top of my head. I've got a night ore right under it. And the night ore will do just fine. Generally, the night ore doesn't work like fire, but in this case, it works just as well as anything else. Um, the other options are you can use lava. You can actually use netherrack with fire lit under it. But you need some kind of heat source, even just a minor one like night ore, to really get this thing cooking. Now, how does it work? Well, if we look at our recipes, if we want to make night ore, we need all these elements but we also need a catalyst. Obviously we need, you know, boiling water as well, which, you know, bucket, water, pretty simple. Now, why do I have a bucket of water on my wall? Let's say we screw up and we accidentally make some flux. This is gonna allow us to fix that. Simple flux is easy enough to break down with water, but you need to know what you're doing, which is a key thing. And hopefully we don't have an accent, but in case there is one, I have it on hand, off to the side without an issue, and water right behind me to make sure that this doesn't become an issue. So, what do we want to make? Well, we might want to actually make thomium. So for thomium, we need four magic and some iron. Now, the trick here is finding stuff that has what you're looking for. In this case, we've got all these shards, and we happen to have a ton of them so we might be able to actually use this so let's see let's throw one down and I need my thermometer look at that it's got magic sadly it's got a bunch of other stuff and that's gonna be where our problem entails now what do I mean by problem well whenever you put stuff in your cauldron it's going to boil down eventually but you want to catch it before it boils down so in this case we need four magic and a bit of iron let's make sure we have these on hand there's our iron so we need four magic one two three four and then one ingot and we now have a thomium ingot but if you notice, there's some weird bubbles going on in there. Now, let me explain what's happening. Right now, in the cauldron, all those elements and stuff that we just threw in are still in there. They're not gone, we just used up the magic. So, if we actually look at our earth shards, that means there's about 8 earth and about 4 crystals still in there. And that's a problem. As that continues to boil down and boil down, it's going to break down into its most base elements. Thankfully, Earth is already pretty base, so it's not really going to do too much. Oh, but there's our problem. I knew it was going to happen. So, let's grab our bucket. And a quick tap of the bucket. Drop and pick up, right? And the flux is gone. But, if you notice, there's still a couple of colored uh, bubbles there, so... Yeah, we have a chance of more flux happening, which is kind of an issue. And there's two kinds of flux that comes from this. The gas, which you just saw rise, and a more liquid form, which is kind of nasty. 
Now, since we're playing Blightfall, you guys already know what Taint looks like. So, imagine this, but on a bigger scale, and that's what causes Blightfall. Bad alchemy. Now, we're just gonna... Kind of... I'm trying to think of, like, can we just let this be, or... No, nope, no, nope, we want to get rid of what's in there. So, oh, looks like the bubbles are gone. So, I guess we don't have to. But say you want to get rid of all the crap that's in your cauldron all at the same time anyways. Shift, right click, and you will empty your cauldron. Pretty nice, right? However, keep in mind that doing that will instantly cause any flux. So be prepared to immediately take care of it. Let's go ahead and refill this. So you guys are probably going, there has to be a safer way. There has to be. Well, in fact, there is. Essentially, essentially you need Essentia that's going to be a bit pure. Something that doesn't have other crap in there. And since every item in the game has Essentia, it's like, well, maybe there's an item out there that carries just one or two. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple. Like, this one has only three. But if you look at my soapstone bricks, they only have one. So, doing your research, you could potentially find stuff that's pretty boiled down already. But it might be better if you make your own. How? Well, let's get on to that. Over here, you'll notice there are warded jars. Warded jars are going to become essential for what we do here in just a moment. So, you might want to grab a wooden slab and some glass panes. Also keep in mind that these are going to be essential later on as well. So making a handful wouldn't exactly hurt you. I'm going to go ahead and make a good handful here myself. So let's see. I'll make... Oh, that will be fine. And... If we do this... 16... 32... Eh, that should be enough for now. So now, we put this in our arcane workbench, slab, and we have some jars. Awesome! Okay, well, what else? Well, the jars are for holding it, but we need something to break it down. Well, for that, we're going to need to do the research so that we can get our alchemical furnace. An alchemical furnace requires a crucible, a furnace, and arcane stone. Now, I've already shown you how to make your... Crucible, which is great. You know, we, we've already nailed out that part. You should know how to make a furnace by now. I'm hoping. If you don't, we got a problem. But, on the next note, we do need to make the stone. Now, how do you make the stone? Well, for that, you're going to need shards. And you need to surround it with stone. Now, in this case... I'm missing a little bit of earth fizz, but I have that on this one. So, we're going to go ahead and make that. And then I'm going to switch my wands back out. There we go. It's always good to have a spare wand on hand, right? Okay. So, according to our recipe, we're going to need the arcane stone, a furnace, and a crucible. So, taking out our shards, we need arcane stone, furnace, and crucible. Boom, alchemic furnace. Now, obviously, if this was it, it'd be way too easy, right? Well, this is the base piece. It's going to get a little bit more complex, so you're going to have to bear with me. You'll notice there's other pages here, and for good reason. We need to actually build at least the arcane emblet em <laughs> alembic there we go <laughs> now i'm going to need a spare bucket sadly which is going to kind of suck because i've only got one spare on me i'm going to go ahead and drop off some of my stuff here hope you guys don't mind if you do i apologize okay so now that we've got our alembic there we need to build or not alembic <laughs> I alchemic furnace. We need to build a couple other things. Now we're gonna need some vis filters, which is gold and some silver wood planks. So we got some silver wood planks. We need the gold. Come over here and once more we're going to I said we build two. Two seems adequate. 
Oh. Well. <laughs> Apparently it builds in groups of two, which is fantastic. Okay, once we have that, we're gonna need our bucket, gold, and iron for just one. So, sadly, only one bucket that I can spare because if we have another accident, I'd like to be able to take care of it. Oh, I seem to have put away my iron. <laughs> Silly me. There we go. Now, using my iron... Boom. There we go. And this goes right on top. Just like that. Now, keep in mind that you might want this more in the open instead of flush against the wall. I just happen to like mine flush against the wall to start with. Later on, I'm going to have an entire room that's dedicated to just this thing. Which is going to make more sense later. Now, we're going to need some tubing. We're going to need some quicksilver drops. And the way you get quicksilver drops is pretty simple. Let me actually type that in. And quicksilver drops are gotten from, well, quicksilver. Quicksilver, on the other hand, is received from shimmer leaf or by smelting cinnabar. Now, there's the kicker. You're either going to have to sacrifice your shimmer leaf or you're going to have to go out and get cinnabar. Cinnabar is in a variety of different mod packs, easy enough to get a hold of, but you've got to keep in mind that shimmer leaf is going to be your most readily available source. And here in Blightfall, that right there is already like, but I need Shimmerly for everything else, like to help cure the plague according to my Thamanomicon. This is true, this is true, I will not disagree with that, but one or two is not going to kill you. Now we're going to need that, glass, iron, and gold nuggets. Well, let's see, we got our glass, we got our iron, we just need gold nuggets. So gold into gold nuggets. There we go, iron, and glass. Now you're not going to need too many of these, at least not to start, but I am going to show you a small problem that does occur, and you're going to have to find creative ways to kind of figure it out. So, once again, we're going to go over here. We're going to put down a bottle here, a bottle here, and just to kind of prove a point later, we're going to put a ball there. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we are going to take our piping and put it over here. Go into our alembic, or not our alembic, our furnace. <laughs> I am really being silly today. And we need fuel, and we need something to burn down. Once again, we're going to use earth shards because it's something that's rarely available to us. And this time we're just going to take... We're going to use eight. Now, eight's gonna be something that's very important. That's a very important number. You need to remember it. Gotta throw eight in here. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna cook down all the essence. And as it cooks down, it's going to store the essence, and then some of the essence is gonna go up into here, into the alembic. Okay? If you have the goggles of revealing, which are a creation done in. I believe artificing yep there they are if you have these goggles right here you'll actually be able to see what essentias are going through here and what's in what now if you notice this has stored a lot of stuff but it can't get rid of it that's because the alembic is full and if you notice we did get some magic but there's gotta be other elements in there right well the way you solve this is you connect it to another bottle but watch what happens if the bottle is connected to the same pipe See that smoke? That smoke means that a particular type of Essentia is more or less taking over. It's saying, no, this is mine. So in that case, it's a magic Essentia. Let's break that, and it's going to go back to normal. Now on the contrary, if we go and we do this, there we go, and it is draining out crystal okay 
Now, we could just solve this problem right here by breaking this bottle, which drops it with the Essentia inside, and putting down the new bottle, which is now our Earth Elemental. Pretty nifty, right? Now, keep in mind that Essentia will contest, and there are ways around this, including other tubes, <clears throat> which can be found right in here. However, I'm going to let you guys kind of discover your own way of doing it, and figure that out. If you want, maybe in a later tutorial, we'll get into more advanced forms of breaking down the Sientia and reforming it. But for now, that's the basics and what you're more or less going to need. Now remember how I said 8? Now this is going to be a kicker because I'm going to need you to follow me on this for various reasons. Now, if you notice, I'm kind of waddling my way through our little <laughs> home here, as you will actually see in our Blightfall series. And I had to go get some clay. Now, why clay? What am I doing? What's happening here? Essentially, if you have a little bit of clay, some glass, in the shape of a bucket, you'll get files. Now, files, in this case, are used to hold Essentia. Now, if you notice, we've got some crystal here. And the crystal is now holding eight. Not too bad, right? Oh, looks like some other Essentia is draining in there. Let's put that in there. And now we've got Crystal over here, and we got Magic over here. But if you notice, I can't drain the Magic. That means something has gone awry. Well, to fix that, we're going to need to be a bit more smart about things. First off, we could put two bottles down, but if you notice, they're not draining into one another. This is going to be a bit of an issue if you're not careful. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a jar label. Now jar labels can be made by, you know, taking Essentia and kind of toss them on the label itself. But in this case, we need ink, a slime ball, and paper. Now I happen to have some paper here. And I believe I have some ink somewhere, but the slime ball is going to be a bit more problematic. So we got to be a little bit more careful of that. Let's see. Ink, I believe I have right here. And slime ball. Hmm. I'm actually not sure if I have anything that can work as a slime ball. Huh. Let me think here for a moment. Hmm. This could actually be a legitimate problem. Slime ball, slime ball, slime ball. What can I use for slime ball? Well, here we go. We got another recipe. And we go through the different essentias. Oh, there we go. We can use a ball of glue, or we can use pink slime balls. Now, pink slime balls obviously might not be our answer, but glue. Well, in this case, we can actually use... Oh, we can also use tar, which we get from bitumen. So, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to smelt that down real quick. Thankfully, we have a good supply of that. I'm actually very grateful that we actually found this stuff. I had to actually think for a moment, because... In this world, slime is a bit more difficult to get. So, let's smelt this down for tar. There we go. And thankfully, we do not need the other. So, let's see. Take our paper, our ink, and our slime. Four paper, one ink one slime or variant thereof and boom we now have labels now why is a label important why are we doing the label with our jars well that's going to be a little bit more obvious here in just a second watch this our jar is now labeled and if you notice it's starting to suck out the other essentia well actually yeah that's exactly what it's doing Essentially, it is pulling all the Essentia out and saying, this is mine. Similar to how 
when one jar isn't from another, it's saying, this is mine, through the tubes. So, now that we have that, there's possibility that there's eight in here, which there was, and now, we're gonna go back over here. Now, thankfully, all our stuff boiled off, we're all good, but we wanna make more of our metal. So, before we had extra, we gotta be careful not to have too much extra. This is where you're gonna to wanna to do some math. So it's four magic for one piece of thomium. So since we have eight essentia here, which if you guys want, you can also study with your good old thomometer. There we go. Since this is eight, that means we can make two. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is have your iron on hand, throw this in, one, two. Two thomium! Ah, ah, ah. Now, that's kind of the basics. This is how you break down Essentia. This is how you pretty much use it to make what you need to make. And you are gonna have to do some math. Now, later on, there'll be ways that we don't have to actually do so much math. But, for now, for the basics, this is gonna cover a lot. And you're gonna wanna know this so that you can proceed forward in Thumbcraft. This is gonna become a big part of your life for a long time, so be prepared. Now on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this actually helped quite a bit, and I hope that you guys got what you needed out of it. If you didn't, let us know down in the comments. But if you did, a like would be much appreciated. If you wanna see more of these tutorials, feel free to subscribe to our channel, or just look through the playlists. On that note, maybe you have a suggestion or something else. Also put that in the comments. Or maybe you want to see some of our other shows. Maybe hit subscribe and see all our different things, including our Blightfall series, other tutorials, and maybe some Fallout 4. You know, just for those who are watching this in the current time. On that note, take care, stay safe, stay well. And just remember, mathematics is very, very required, even when dealing with magic. Later, everybody. Okay, got me some magic bottles. Pop that off. Woohoo! Okay. Um, where am I gonna store these? Hmm. Interesting problem.